Hi again everyone, this is Brian MacDonald, author of Practical Stress Analysis of Finite Elements. We're back again with the second part of the Basic Stress Analysis with ANSYS series. Okay, here we are back in ANSYS and we're back at the end of the last tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, you need to go and watch that before you try and do what we're going to do here. Okay, so let's just talk about the last tutorial. There were some problems there. Okay, at the bottom here we held um, this bottom line in all degrees of freedom. That's introduced what's called a coupled strain effect. So if we thought we were going to get simple tension here, we haven't. Okay, so look at what happened to this note here. This note here cannot move in any direction. The note above it is free to move in both um, the x and the y direction. So this note here is, is held in the x direction here. It wants to thin along with this node, but it's not allowed to move. So we get this kind of a bowing in effect happening here. If we wanted to model simple tension, then um, we've made a mistake here. Okay, so we need to change our boundary condition down there. The other thing um, about that model that wasn't so great was we applied a pressure load along the top. There's nothing really wrong with that and it can give you the results you want as long as you know how to calculate um, the, how the pressure load turns into a force and vice versa. But in a lot of cases we actually want to apply a force. So what we're going to do is we're going to redo this model. We're going to put the proper boundary condition on the bottom and we're going to couple the nodes up at the top and apply a force to those and see how that goes for us. And depending on how long that takes us, we might try a couple of other little things as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is change the job name. So we'll go up to File, Change Job Name. So this one is Basic Stress Analysis 2 or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so now I'll save this file. It's going to keep it separate from the previous analysis. Now I have a new analysis. Let's go back to the preprocessor. Um, let's just plot the elements we have. Let's, we're going to keep the mesh that we have, okay, for the time being. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get rid of those boundary conditions we applied down there. At the moment we can't see those boundary conditions, so let's they're applied to a line. So let's plot a line. We can't see them on the line. Let's go to plot controls symbols. Okay, here turn on all boundary conditions and reactions, and go OK. So now there's the boundary conditions we have. So this arrow here means that this line is held in the vertical direction, and this arrow here means it's held in the um, x direction or horizontal direction. So let's get rid of those boundary conditions for the moment. So loads, define loads, delete, uh, structural, displacement, and we apply it to a line. So let's click on line and go OK. And let's just get rid of all degrees of freedom. So now we have no boundary conditions. So now let's just go back in and go apply structural displacement again on lines and this time we're only going to do it in the y direction okay it's actually good practice I didn't mention it in the last um, tutorial but it's actually good practice to put a zero in there as well because we want it to be held and not move so a zero displacement okay so ui is zero okay we get the arrows here showing us what's going on let's just do a replot okay so there's our line and it's held in the y direction Okay, let's keep everything as it is for the moment with that, and let's just solve that and see what happens. Um, so everything is still the same from the last time, so we can move quickly through this. Solution is done. Our load is still applied up to that top line there. Uh, let's go and plot the deformed shape with the undeformed edge again. So this time you can see that it actually has just moved in, so it's kept its square, or sorry, its rectangular shape and it's moved up. In this case it's actually moved in a little, it's moved to the left a little bit as well. So you can see the whole model has actually shifted slightly to the left as well as expanding. So we don't really want the model, we want it to be held at the bottom here, we don't want it sliding around the place. So it's good practice to just maybe hold one node in the middle there as well um, in the x direction to stop the model from floating all over the place. So in other words, at the moment this model will stay on that line at the bottom, but there's nothing stopping it going all the way over here, all the way over there. And if we have a couple of elements in the middle here that are badly aligned, that are kind of pointing in a 45 degree direction or something like that, that could introduce some, uns um, yeah, some instabilities into our solution and actually make the model slide across. So let's just prevent that. Okay, so let's go back and plot elements, go back to the preprocessor, um, let's go to loads and let's apply uh, displacement and this time on a node. Okay, so let's just pick, it doesn't matter which node we pick, let's just pick that one there in the middle and go okay and this one in the x direction. Okay, so that particular node can't move in the x direction. 
Okay, so it's giving me a warning here to say both solid model and finite element model boundary conditions have been applied. So I applied a boundary condition to the line, which was a solid model boundary condition, and I applied a boundary condition to a, a node, just, just a node, which is part of the element here. Um, so that was applied directly to the finite element model and ignored the CAD model completely. Okay, um, So it's basically just saying a warning here, they can overwrite each other if you're applying the same thing twice, just be careful. Okay, so now let's just um, save that. Let's just solve this one quickly and just take a look at what happens. So solve current load step. Let's just accept everything's okay there. Solution is done. Again, go into the post processor, plot the deformed and undeformed edge. And now you can see this, it's, it's moved in a little bit on the right hand side here and it's moved in the same amount on the left hand side. So we've kept the model in the middle of the screen and it's thinned as we want it to. It's kept its rectangular shape. So now we've got basically pure tension. Okay, so the bottom is held, the top is pulled, everything is happening in the y direction. So we've got pure, pure tension here. So let's just look at some of the stress results from that. Um, so let's look at the x component of stress. Okay, and let's look at the uh, y component of stress. Okay. Okay, so we have no stress in the y direction. Okay, so it's all the same color, red, and in the x direction, we have got stress. So why is that? Because it's thinning in the x direction. Okay, so remember, the edge was out here and it moved in. This edge was out here and it moved in. So we've got a strain associated with that and a stress associated with that. Okay, again, these results are not good. Okay, let me just emphasize that this right now. We're going to talk about fixing these later on. For the moment I really want you to understand how I'm applying these loads and what effect applying these loads has. Later on we'll talk about remeshing and getting correct results um, in, in cases like this. So these stress results they're not good. Okay let's just accept that. Okay so let's go back and look at our model again. Um, so now we have been applying a pressure load to that line up there. Okay so it's a surface load to that line. Okay so let's think about a different way of doing that. Okay, so let's go into loads and again let's go delete and in this case we want to delete the pressure load on a line. Let's pick that line and go OK. So uh, just do replot. How do we know that's gone? Okay, good, a good way of finding that out is to go up here, list, loads, we can different type, surface loads, let's just say on all lines and I get a box that tells me there's no surface loads on lines to list, so I've gotten rid of any surface loads that may have been on a line. Okay, now a mistake a lot of beginners make is they think, well, I want to apply a force up here, I'll just apply a um, force to the middle node or a group of nodes or whatever. So let's just say I'll apply a force to a node, let's put that one there, and it's going to be in the y direction, and let's say we're going to apply uh, one kilonewton, 1000 newtons. Okay, so there's the arrow showing me it's going in the positive y direction. So forces go in the positive y direction. Pressures tend to act um, on the face they're applied to as opposed to away from the face. So the problem we had in the last tutorial. Okay, so let's just uh, again save our analysis. Okay, and let's just solve this one and see what this one does. Solution is done. Okay, let's go to the post processor, and uh, let's sorry, let's look at the deformed shape first. Deformed and undeformed edge. Okay. Oh, oh, what's after happening? We're not really getting that thinning effect. We're getting a little bit of a bowing effect, if anything. And look what's after happening. One of our nodes, the one node that the load is applied to, is after deforming way more than everything else around it. And again, if we were to look at the, the stress around that, oh, look at that. We're not even getting the stresses we were finding down here the last time. This is called an artificial stress concentration. So we've introduced an artificial stress concentration by applying a uh, force to one node. That stress concentration does not exist in reality, and this is a really bad result. Okay, so we need to get around this somehow. So let's say we want to still apply a force to, that, to the top surface here. In particular, maybe we've we've got some experimental data we're trying to match up our model to. We need to apply a force load. How do we do it? Okay, let's go back into the preprocessor again. Plot our elements. Um, we just plot nodes for a moment. Um, no, let's go back to elements again. Let's just delete that force that we applied first. So loads, delete, structural, force on nodes. 
And rather than picking the actual node, let's just go pick all. Okay, here, because it'll get rid of any forces we have in the model. Okay, so that's gone now. Again, just to be sure, we can go list, loads, uh, forces on all nodes. There's nothing there. Okay, so we know that's gone. Okay, so the answer to how we actually apply this without introducing a stress concentration is called coupling. Okay, so down here you can see we've got coupling. Okay, so if we go into coupling, I'm going to couple degrees of freedom. So what that means is I'm going to join all these nodes up in the top into a coupled set, and I'm going to tell them they all have to move together in the y direction. So even if a force is just applied to one of them, and it causes this node to move up one millimeter, this node has to follow it and move up one millimeter as well. And so does this one, and so on. So let's do that. So we're going to go couple degrees of freedom. It asks us to pick or enter the nodes to be coupled. I'm going to say box. I'm going to put a box around those. So let's put a box around those nodes. So we've picked all the nodes on the top. We go OK. It asks us for a reference number for the coupled set. This can be whatever you want. I'm just going to say it's 99. And a degree of freedom. So in which direction are you coupling them? I'm coupling them in the Y direction. So let's go UY. We go OK. And you'll see that these little green arrows have turned up here. So I'll just plot nodes so you can see that more clearly. OK. So here are the green arrows linking those up. These other things that have popped up here, these are reaction forces from the last solution. Okay, so here's a reaction force to the load that we had there. Here's reaction forces um, related to the um, constraints we have in the bottom. So don't worry about these for the moment. They'll, they'll be overwritten when we solve again. So now I've coupled all the nodes up here. Now I can reapply my force to any one of those nodes. Okay, so go loads, apply. Uh, force on nodes. Let's pick. Doesn't really matter. We could pick that one. We could pick this one. Let's pick this one. Okay. And again, just FY, Y direction, force uh, 1000 newtons. Okay. There it is there. Uh, let's just plot elements again. And let's solve this one. Well, save. Solve. Current load step. Okay. Solution is done. OK, let's go and look at our deform shape as usual. Now we're back to that nice deform shape again. We've gotten rid of that artificial stress concentration. Let's look at stress just to show. Look, we're back to the same result we had with the pressure load, but we've applied a force. OK, so I think um, I've actually covered quite a lot quite quickly in the, that video today. Um, so I think I'll stop that video. And in the next video, we're going to develop this model a little bit. We're going to put a hole in the middle of the model. We're going to look at what effect that has. We're going to look at meshing around that hole and maybe using some um, symmetry boundary conditions to make a more efficient mod, um, model. So that's all for this time. So if you if you enjoy these videos, if you find them useful, please remember to favorite them, to like them. Um, and again, any if you want further information for what I'm about anything I'm talking about, then it is in, in my book, um, and which is available on Amazon.com. So click the link um, underneath this video. Okay, thank you. See you next time.